G'day everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the differences between flaming combustion and smouldering combustion. Now as we know, flaming takes place when gaseous materials such as pyrolysis gases are oxidised and this gives rise to a flame. Actually it's probably just going to be easier if I show you, so yeah, come with me. Okay, so now we have our flame and in this picture what we have is we've got a candle burning where our fuel is actually the wax itself from the candle. We're getting the oxygen we need for our fire from the air that is around the candle and we've already got our heat because I lit the candle with a match so we have a piloted ignition. So that's where our heat from our fire is coming from and that is where we get our fire triangle. So if we have a closer look at our flame, what you can see is there's different sections to the flame itself. If you have a look down the bottom of the flame, you can see where it becomes more transparent. And this is actually where our fuel is being drawn into because our wax is being melted by the heat of the fire and then it gets drawn up the wick. And once it's drawn up the wick, the fire itself actually heats our wax to the point where it gets pyrolyzed and turned into a gas. And once it gets turned into a gas, it can float away from the wick and that's when the oxygen from the air can actually join with the pyrolysis products. And this is where the chemical reaction takes place, where those two elements, being the fuel and the oxygen, join together and they release a lot of energy. And it's this energy that actually gives rise to the flame itself, because all the particles that are floating around in that area are heated. And when we heat carbon, for instance, it will actually start to glow, and this is where we see our flame come from. Because in this case, our carbon starts to heat up and then it, therefore it starts to glow and therefore we see this yellow flame and this is exactly what a flame is. It's actually these products that have been pyrolyzed out of our fuel and then some of them have gone through this chemical reaction which has released a lot of energy and this energy has heated up the products of pyrolysis and when they're heated up then they start to glow and as they move through the flame they can be further oxidized by the air that is around the flame or if they don't get oxidized which is a normal occurrence for a diffused flame because they're not very efficient some of those products will be released as exhaust or what we know as smoke so this is what we're looking at when we're looking at a flaming fire we see our fuel being heated, that releases some flammable gases which then mixes with the atmosphere and allows that oxidation process to take place. And then this is where our flame comes from. Now this is different to a surface oxidation which is what we're going to demonstrate next. Now to do that, what we need to do is actually remove all the possible pyrolysis products from our fuel. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some plywood and we're going to place it inside a flask. And then what we're going to do is heat that flask until all of the pyrolysis products have actually been removed from our fuel. Now what you can see here is I've placed them inside a flask and we start to heat the fuel. And the first sign you actually see from this fuel being heated is a lot of white vapor coming out. And that's the initial stage and that's actually the moisture that's contained within the fuel itself. Now, as you can see, that starts to condense as it comes down the hose, and it's coming out of that hose as water droplets. Now, this is the initial stage, because as we know, water will actually evaporate at 100 degrees, which is a fairly low temperature, and it's below the point where most natural materials will actually pyrolysize. So this is the initial stage that we actually see coming from our fuel. Now, I actually ended up heating this flask for over an hour and a half to remove all of the pyrolysis products, so what I've done is I've sped this footage up just so we can see the different stages. And you can see that the tar is starting to build up on the side of the flask. And you can actually see all the pyrolysis products building up inside the flask. Now what's happening is because we're heating our fuel inside a flask, there's no available oxygen inside. So we can continue to cook our fuel until the point where there's actually no pyrolysis products left but we don't actually expect to see it catch on fire because we only have two sides of the fire triangle available to the fuel. And this is because we have our heat and we have our fuel, but there is no oxygen inside that flask because as the pyrolysis products push their way out of the flask, then it stops any oxygen from actually entering. But as you can see, if I try to light the gases within the flask after removing the cork, they are quite flammable. And this just goes to show that these gases are in fact very flammable. And we really should expect that because if you remember back to our demonstration with our candle, it's actually the smoke that's burning when we're looking at a flame. 
So what we're going to do is continue to cook these bits of wood until there's no more pyrolysis gases coming out. And once we've done that, we're going to try setting fire to them. Now what we did at the start of the experiment is we actually weighed the pieces of timber before we started to cook them. And you can see here that before we started to heat our fuel, it weighed around about 21 and a half grams. However, after we've heated our fuel, you can see that it's gone all black and actually turned into charcoal. And this is because we've removed all of that moisture and all of those pyrolysis products. And you can see now that it only weighs just less than six grams, so it's lost an awful lot of weight, even though we've never actually set it on fire. So what we're gonna do now is see if we can actually set this charcoal on fire and see if we can get an active flame out of it. And what you can see once we add flame to the charcoal is yes, in fact, it will burn. But now it's burning with a smoldering fire rather than a flaming fire. And this is because all of those pyrolysis products, or at least most of them, have been removed from the pieces of wood. Now, this means that it can still smolder, that surface oxidation can take place, but there isn't enough gas being emitted from the fuel source to actually sustain a flaming combustion. You will see a few little puffs of smoke here and there where we haven't been able to completely pyrolyze them out of the fuel, but that's not enough to actually sustain a flame. So what we're seeing is the oxidation process is happening on the surface of the fuel itself. And what you'll notice is, is there's starting to be some white powder accumulate on top of the fuel. Now this is actually ash. Now the composition of the ash can vary greatly depending on what's being burnt and how hot the fire actually is. But generally speaking, it's gonna be made up of the products that haven't been fully oxidized in the fire, as well as a range of different minerals that were actually in the fuel source before the fire actually started. All right, so now we've seen that flaming combustion takes place when the gaseous material, such as the pyrolysis products, is being oxidized, and this gives rise to the flame itself. Whereas in smoldering combustion, what we're seeing is that oxidation process is actually happening on the surface of the material that is being oxidized, and this gives rise to smoldering combustion. And this is the differences between smoldering and flaming combustion. But that's it for this one. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.